All right. Good morning. Steve, will you kick us off? Sure. Thanks. And hello. Thanks, everyone, for joining us for this D5 preview webcast. My name is Steve Balint, and I'm the chair of the OTC D5 Advisory Board. I'm speaking to you from Rio de Janeiro, where I'm managing the design and implementation of projects for the giant Libra pre-salt field. Joining me today are two individuals who have been driving forces in creating D5. From Mexico City, Helga Hova Holderson is an advisory board member, as well as vice president of strategy and portfolio North America for Statoil. In Houston, we have Art Schroeder, OTC D5 program committee chairman and CEO of Energy Valley. Helga currently serves as the general director of Statoil Mexico, while Art leads a company that commercializes and advances energy-related technologies. Now that we've all been introduced, I'd like to ask Helga to tell us about the inspiration behind D5. As a reminder, we have some questions that we'll be addressing at the end. Helga? Thank you, Steve, and good morning, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining us on March 31, the very day that the Eiffel Tower opened in Paris in 1889. The, today, the Eiffel Tower is Paris. I think you'll agree. And our dream is that people will say that D5 is innovation and creative destruction, and that it is as cool and trendsetting as South by Southwest or the X Games. Let's go back 15,000 years ago on the grounds of the OTC in Houston today. The most high-tech at the time were, of course, flint arrowheads. Nothing was more high-tech than flint arrowheads 15,000 years ago. Now, imagine that Steve and I are sitting by the fire and looking at the moon. And Steve says to me, Helga, look at that beautiful moon. I wish we could go there. And I say, Steve, are you crazy? We can't go to the moon. All we have are flint arrowheads. How is that possible? But then we did on July 21, 1969. So that shows what we can do with imagination, innovation, and creative destruction. Today, we develop offshore fields in 10,000 feet of water, and that is like going to the moon every single day, OK? So 30% of the world's total daily oil production, which is now up to 92 million barrels a day, comes from offshore. Offshore is a huge business in what we call EMP, exploration and production, and it's a 250 to $300 billion business, right? So we're really, really good at what we do, and we're really, really high tech, but we have a number of challenges facing us right now. Going forward, our industry has to navigate success not in 3D, but in 3E. The three E's being energy, economics, and the environment. We have to tackle all of them in a great way. The biggest three E challenges facing us right now are offshore costs have become too high. Offshore fields are deeper, deeper water and more complex. The communities where we operate expect much more from us to give us the license to operate. And the bottom line is that the offshore industry's margins now are too low and the return on capital employed is not good enough. Investors are saying you have to improve. You have to make yourself into a 2.0 of what you are. So in short, something must be done to restore the competitiveness of the offshore industry. And of course, Churchill put it this way, success is never final. And that's exactly what we see now. We're fantastic, but we have to do better. So what's going on is what Darwin saw when he went to the Galapagos Islands in the 1830s. His profound discovery was it's not the biggest, it's not the most intelligent, but those most able to adapt, they are the one who wins and flourish. He saw that if the flowers on an island develop long necks, and if you were a bird with a short beak up against those flowers, you didn't get much nectar, and you were pretty much finished unless you adapted and grew a longer beak, making it possible to get that nectar. What does this have to do with anything? Well, a low oil price and high cost, they are exactly equivalent to a flower with a long neck. The industry cannot get the nectar unless we adapt. OTC wants to be a catalyst for the industry adapting, and we are offering a brand new event, we call it OTC D5, to help the industry grow longer beaks in a hurry. 
with the recent drop in oil prices, of course, adapting is more important than ever. And the new normal may not be back to $110 a barrel. It might be lower, so it's even more urgent. So D5 is a complement to the OTC mothership. The first four days of OTC, you can see the greatest technology on the planet when it comes to offshore available now. And then on day five of OTC week, so this time on May 8th, you attend OTC D5 and you get lots of new ideas for 2.0 from thought leaders. They expose you to rapid and disruptive technological advances in other industries. They spark creative and innovative ideas for you. They give you non-linear visions of the offshore industry's future. And why do I say non-linear? Because that's very important. Remember Henry Ford, his famous quote, he said, if I have asked people what they wanted, everybody would have said, a faster horse. So sometimes we don't know we need a car, we just ask for an extrapolation of what we have. So we are very excited about OTC D5, and we just can't wait to share this new inflection point with you. And we think it can lead to incremental and disruptive innovations that gives the industry a longer beak. So this is not a paint-by-numbers conference where we all draw the same animal at the end of the day. The nine speakers will give each audience member a bunch of dots to connect in their mind. And at the end of the day, we hope everyone has made a drawing in their minds of something new that they can do at home, becoming more competitive with a longer beak. Let me close by a quote by the Irish playwright Sir Bernard Shaw. He said, some people see what is and say, why? I dream things that never were and say, why not? May 8th, OTC D5 is going to be a why not day. And we don't have an Eiffel Tower in Houston, but we have the Astrodome. In 10 years, maybe the Astrodome is where we have the D5. It's the top innovative building on the planet. So that's my vision and our vision for OTC D5 and how we came to think this is very important for the industry to adapt. Now back to Steve for a little bit about the format of OTC D5 on May 8th. Steve? Terrific. Thanks, Helge. You know, the goal of D5 is to help energy professionals connect the dots and go outside the box, as Helge has said, to invent the next big thing for the industry. For nearly 50 years, you know, OTC has been meeting the needs for the offshore energy community and sharing technical knowledge, and that helps us improve our performance and increase safety around the world where we operate by focusing on the industry activities. But what we see today is broad and, and exponential growth of technology, and the exponent in that equation is getting bigger every day. Phenomenal things are happening outside of our industry ideas and hardware that, you know, with the right thinking, could be applied within our industry to really bring us to that next step. With D5, what we want to try to do is provide some of those ideas and hardware, some of those dots, if you will, and challenge the attendees to think about them and creatively destruct our industry. We'll do this with, within an uh, intimate environment it's designed to engage and inspire the attendees. So this is different than the OTC that we've come to know. What we're going to do is a different format, which will feature inspirational thought leaders from outside our industry. The speakers have all been hand-picked, and it's all been based on incredibly innovative achievements they've been able to accomplish. D5 will cover three areas. And these areas are critical to our ener energy community. Around the business, looking at the energy outlook, looking at the economics and startups. Technology, thinking about, of course, innovation. Um, what's, what's happening in science? What about big data? How can we use that? And then in gaming, for instance, and people side of things as well. Um, what motivates people now? How has it changed? What's happening in the health and productivity? about the workplace culture. So these are some big areas that we want to focus on. Beyond the speakers, um, we're also going to have some opportunities to interact. So we'll have group discussions to spur on creativity. Our goal is to sow the seeds of the next big steps 
for our industry in a way that addresses technology game changers, leadership uh, practices, and competitive advantages. So I want to hand it over to Art right now to share more about the speakers we have and the timing. So Art. Thanks, Steve. I'm delighted to be here and I hope our uh, audience out there is uh, tuned in. This is going to be the next big thing and what better time to have it is on May 8th, uh, uh, right after uh, OTC. It will be at uh, none other than the University of Houston, which was done on purpose. The link to academics as well as to industry we felt was important. It will be uh, all day starting at 7 a.m. on Friday, May 8th, and uh, our role was basically to deliver on Helga's vision and Steve's structure, and it was an exciting opportunity. I had lots of help, uh, just to name a few. Brad Burke, uh, Managing Director of the uh, Rice Alliance, uh, Tom Gay, uh, Sammy Harun, uh, as Head of Innovation in Silicon Valley for Baker Hughes, Brittany Laughlin, uh, Managing Director of a private equity firm, uh, uh, Jim Sledwick, uh, Venture Capital, President of Venture Capital Firm. So, we were pulling both from inside the industry and outside to get the uh, best and brightest thought leaders, opinion shapers around the globe. And we purposely went outside industry, uh, oil and gas, to be able to leverage learnings that these thought leaders had come from uh, the military. Talking about uh, leadership under fire, if you're a commander in the Navy, uh, as um, uh, Mike Abercroft is, uh, that's telling you something about leadership, how to not only survive but excel in, in that type of uh, situation. From the business area, uh, Michael Porter, uh, Porter's Five Forces, uh, uh, Harvard economist, researcher, uh, speaker, teacher. I, one of the uh, more interesting speakers that does have uh, some direct connectivity to our industry is a uh, former NASA, NASA shuttle commander and um, commander, um, uh, Mike Bloomfield, uh, took the lessons from the Challenger and from um, really crisis as, as far as how to prepare and how to uh, basically use technology to conquer the unknown. Uh, Mike today is actually with Oceaneering, so there is a link there uh, to the uh, uh, industry. Uh, Avi Rochantel uh, actually was uh, he's uh, Chief Executive Officer of 3D Printing. It's just incredible what's going on. Uh, body parts are being printed on 3D printers, and the price of some of these printers are coming down where uh, uh, you can tinker in the garage with a 3D printer and uh, rapid prototype. So the, the, the question is, is that uh, in today's environment, which is a lot different from a year ago at $100 oil when we envisioned day five, uh, D5, I think you could almost say that it's even more important today. It's not about working more hours. It's not about, as they say, working harder. It's doing things differently. The doing the same thing just faster, more frequently, isn't going to accomplish what industry needs to accomplish in this low price environment. And who knows how long that may last. It's about rethinking our uh, structure, our organization, and new leadership skills to operate in this lower cost environment. Some of the dots that you'll see out there from healthcare and from um, uh, other areas uh, we may be able to adopt and adapt and redeploy and we may be able to do some of that pretty quickly. Some of it will be more difficult as far as building into our culture, into our structure, how to still maintain the utmost respect and adherence to safety, but at the same time uh, be able to deliver the uh, heat, light, and mobility that the planet's uh, seven billion people are calling for. So the people uh, that are interested in taking on this challenge, the uh, offshore technology executives, the C-suite, uh, the 
auditorium that we'll be uh, presenting in is limited to about a little over 400 people. So it will be a very limited audience as compared to uh, AT OTC Monday through Thursday. Uh, we're also purposely looking for uh, some academic connection here as well as young professionals. Uh, there's anyone who uh, feels like they want to really reinvent themselves learning from the best of the best across the uh, planet. Nine speakers, uh, all uh, thought and opinion shapers uh, in their field will be there delivering in a 20-minute um, uh, one on many and then after three sessions of uh, our session of three speakers will have breakouts where the delegates can go straight to the speaker of their choice and really interact in a more personal level. One of the things that will also come out of this is the ability to interact among your fellow delegates. You'll all basically be facing some of the same challenges and be able to uh, network and maybe uh, connect some of the dots uh, right there in the room. Some of the dots may come later. Uh, there's really uh, nothing like this uh, to date that's been conducted in the energy sector and I invite you to come and participate in this exciting event. I have been um, noticed that uh, Lacey, our uh, PR coordinator, has uh, gotten some questions from uh, the audience there, so uh, I'll turn the uh, mic over to Lacey and we'll move into the Q&A portion of the event. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thank you, Art. Uh, I've received several Q&A uh, from our audience, and the first question I think is one that many people have been asking, and it is, why launch a new event for OTC? Yeah, that's a great question, and you know maybe it should be turned around, and why not launch another event? Our <laughs> times are changing. The needs are changing. We always need to be changing ourselves, and what we're looking for is some way to really jumpstart things, not go on the linear path of improvement that uh, Helga mentioned earlier that has been our, say, tradition, but really move things forward. Uh, Helga, you have thoughts on that? Yeah, <clears throat> it's kind of back to Churchill, success is never final, you know. Uh, I used to say about Statoil, I want Statoil to be the Nokia of the oil industry. I don't say that anymore. <laughs> and I, said I want Statoil to be the Blackberry of the oil industry. I don't say that either. No, I want Statoil to be the Apple of the oil industry. But how long do I say that? So this is the nature of things. You know, we, we do fantastic with sailboats, and then we stop sailing, you know, not because the wind went away, but because we have other ways of doing it, right? And this is how we have to renew and adapt. Just like, you know, those flowers, you can't reach the nectar. So. OTC is showing what you can buy today. It's unbelievably impressive for four days, but we have to be mindful of the lack of competitiveness of the industry right now, and we dramatically have to turn ourselves along the whole value chain into a 2.0 version of what we do. And that means you know, more incremental improvements, but clearly some disruptive creative destruction. You know. Yeah. I, I agree with you, Helga. I think uh, I've been a big fan of lifelong learning. If you're not learning and growing, you're dying. I, I think that uh, a lot of uh, folks out there feel that way. They participate in their uh, home society, SPE, AICHE, and TMS. But a lot of that is doing some of the same things with incremental improvements. This will be looking outside our industry uh, globally and doing things differently. There will be some activities and some ideas that won't work in our industry or will need to be adapted to work in our industry, but there will be some that we'll hear during day D5 that we can take home and action immediately. And I think that will be the really the uh, proof will be in the pudding in attending and participating in this uh, event. If you I could add one more thing. I, I think this really could become something great down the road, and you've got to have a vision for where it can go, right? In Houston, you have, you have medical, and you have energy, and you have space, right? And, and uh, if you put these together, together with entrepreneurial people and so on, this really can turn into a, into a magic and, and secret recipe for innovation that Houston is sitting on. 
So my dream, I think I have to get, give Judge Emmett a call. You know, he's wondering, what do we do with the Astrodome, right? We can turn it into the centerpiece of, a, of an innovation hub in Houston that nobody ever has seen the likes of. And this could be the beginning of it, everyone. Yeah, well, I was going to share, uh, Helga, one of the things that we were talking about uh, when we first started talking about this was um, some of these stories that we've heard about coincidental meetings. You know, a doctor meets a 3D printer at a party one evening and describes his problems with a, a patient that he has. And between the two of them, by the end of the evening, they've sorted out how to use the new technology to save her life. You know, those, are, those sort of things happen today more and more often. And what we were trying to do is find some way to make them not coincidental, to cause that to happen. And, uh, and this is our first crack at it. And, and where we might go with this, I think that's a great vision, Helen. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Art, you told us a little bit earlier about the lineup of speakers that we have. What topics will the speakers be discussing at D5? Well, in general, they're going to be discussing their life experiences and their successes and perhaps some of their failures that they learned from. But the big bucket topics are uh, environment and economics, uh, very, very important in our industry, of course. Uh, technology game changers, there's a lot going on in the Internet of Things, big data, analytics, cloud-based computing huge uh, mega leaps are being made there and direct application to oil and gas today. Uh, we also have thought and um, leadership. Uh, in times of a crisis, uh, the leader that got you there, maybe a different leadership style is what's required to move you to the next level. So we'll be challenged by several of the speakers from both uh, NASA as well as uh, the uh, Navy as far as some leadership skills there. Lisa Bodell, a globally recognized innovation leader and futurist, I think will be very exciting. I, again, Porter, I, from uh, my B-School days, uh, his um, research uh, in, as an economist and uh, really how to uh, do things uh, differently, smarter, Porter Five Forces, I think will be exciting. So we have nine different speakers that uh, We'll be speaking again for about 20 minutes each, three speakers, and then we'll do the breakout sessions. And that's really where I think the interactivity, the connectivity uh, will be very uh, valuable. All right. Thank you, Art. Uh, is D5 going to be a one-time event, or will it return next year? It will return. In fact, uh, I, I, uh, we, I think, have uh, made the final arrangements uh, with Rice University. So continuing our trend as far as the uh, university and engagement. One very large public school, University of Houston, educating the masses. Uh, other Rice uh, University, uh, a very small school, but uh, several years ago, I had the honor of uh, meeting Rick Smalley there and his listening to his vision about with nanotechnology and material science changing the landscape. And I think we'll, uh, we're really now seeing the fruits of a lot of that show up in, in our industry. And I think there's tremendous room for additional improvement there. The lineup, the uh, activities of the day may be a little bit different, but it will still be in the direction of reaching for Helga's vision that he painted earlier. All right, well. Maybe I could add just a couple of lines. Uh, I, I talked about navigating success not in 3D but in 3E, right? So I want to add two two letters, and that's uh, two I's. So we have to navigate success in two I plus three E. So it starts with imagination, right? If you can't imagine 2.0 when you're stuck with 1.0, then it never happens. So how do we get better at imagining, you know, a better way? That's very important, right? And that's a science in itself. And then the minute you have this. Uh, idea, you have to turn it into an innovation that you can buy in the marketplace and, and billions of people or hundreds of companies can do it, right? And I think that you cannot just talk about energy anymore. It's not enough. You have to talk about energy, economics, and the environment. Anytime a company leader now navigates success with his or her company and the crew and the team, 
you have to do it well in all the three E's. And let, let me talk about the first E, energy. We say that supply meets demand right now, but it doesn't, because there's 1.3 billion people without electricity. Only 25% of Africa has electricity, right? And then there are 2.6 billion people who is uh, doing their cooking and heating with wood and dung inside with all that smoke, and that leads to 4 million people losing their life from, from that smoke inside, right? So, so 1.3 plus 2.6 billion people do not have the mobility and transportation and electricity to read the homework and the dignity of, of electricity at night that are talked about, right? So we have a tremendous challenge on the first E, energy, so that we can involve these 3 billion people in what we can do, right? So maybe this, uh, this event can also assist these billions of people getting part of what we have uh, going forward. And that gives you kind of a sense of purpose that's much bigger than what we talked about so far. And you see why uh, I love working with these guys. Oh, sorry, Art, <laughs> but they both both of them have such great ideas, great thoughts. And Helga's only mentioned two. There's 24 more letters that we could talk through. <laughs> ideas, thoughts that we've talked about over the last year and a half working on this program. Art, I interrupted you. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, energy without economics doesn't work either, So, uh, and without protecting the environment. So it's really a, a, a three-legged stool there. You, you need to have the support in each one of those areas, and we will try to be broad in addressing all three of those areas during this uh, D5 event. I, I uh, made the comment earlier as far as perhaps some of the listeners' uh, homes societies, uh, ASCHE, TMS, or others. Uh, the vision 50 years ago was is to branch into the unknown of the offshore. Individual societies added one point to the uh, equation, but banding together there was a synergy that developed. We're basically taking that same concept uh, by hosting the D5 event as part of OTC to get the synergy from all the different uh, societies that uh, contribute and make up OTC. Uh, so I would in encourage you again to be part of this inaugural event, part of making history. Can I just say to everybody listening that you are very important, you know, because when you come to this event, right, and you raise your hand and you say something, that can be the catalyst and the trigger in somebody's mind listening to you that, that really connects the dots, right? So you have a tremendous role to play by being active in the, in the sessions uh, after listening to the, to the speakers. And this is almost like E equal MC square, right? So one of those C is that you could be the catalyst for something big to happen along those lines by what you say in the breakouts. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank everyone for their questions, and thank you, Steve, Helga, and Art. Uh, Steve, I know you had a few comments before we conclude. Sure. Thanks, Lacey, and thanks, Art and Helga. It's always a pleasure to work with you all. Um, as you can tell, we're immensely, immensely excited about D5, and uh, we really appreciate you all listening today. We, we're looking forward to seeing you on May 8th there at the event. We only have 400 seats, so compared to 100 thousand people or 80,000 people at OTC, there aren't that many seats available. So please, if you're interested, please go to the website, the OTC website, look into it, and we're really looking forward to seeing you all. Today, we're working with Flint. Help us get to the moon. Thank you all for attending. We'll see you on May 8th. Thank you.